Hello, my name is Damien Callan, and in this next video on oil painting and colour, I'm going to be working with the third complementary pair of colours, yellow and purple, and I'm going to be demonstrating the painting of this still life. So I've left yellow till last because it's in some ways slightly more complicated than the other colours, uh, and I'll go into that when we have a little look at the colour wheel at the start of the video. So you might consider setting up a similar setup yourselves and after you've watched the video, perhaps have a go at this approach. begin with the colour wheel. 12 points, uh, the colours of the spectrum laid out such that the complementary colours are opposite each other and here we've highlighted yellow and purple and we know that when we mix complementary colours together they neutralise each other, they cancel each other out and make each other less colourful so a little bit of purple added to yellow will make it less yellow and, and indeed a little bit darker. And the complicated thing about yellow is it's the lightest colour in the spectrum and so is very easily changed. The term is easily corrupted. So you see to the right of yellow we have yellow orange and to the left of yellow, yellow green. So a small addition of other colours will change yellow quite significantly. But we can look at that with mixing the colours for our still life. And I've laid out my palette. I've put down lemon yellow partly just for reference, for comparison, but I'm going to make mixtures really using cadmium yellow. So for the lemon, I've tried just the cadmium yellow and a little bit of white. And when I compare it with the fruit, it's not quite warm enough. But if I compare lemon yellow, it was a little bit too, almost too green, too cool. I'm then making my own purple from alizarin crimson and ultramarine and using that as the complementary opposite to neutralize the mixture I've made for the lemon. So I started with the main light area, not the highlight, but the main light area of the lemon. And now I'm creating shadow colors by the addition of extra purple. For the yellow pepper, which is almost a yellow orange. Again, I'm starting with cadmium yellow, comparing it with the fruit, but this time I need a little bit more orange. But as I said, when we looked at the color wheel, you don't need very much orange to change the cadmium yellow into a sort of yellow orange. And again, the addition of the same purple is doing more or less what I need to make these shadow colors. But you'll see there I added a little bit of extra orange. So as I add the purple to my yellow orange, I also add extra orange to the lighter parts. And then the red cabbage is built up using the um, purple I made from the alizarin and the ultramarine. And as I get to some of the lighter areas, I'm adding white and the cadmium yellow. Now there is more of a variety of color in the red cabbage. And I've, as usual, looked with my eyes half, half closed to get the main colors. And I've blocked in a pattern of light and shade, uh, which will gradually be um, refined and developed uh, as I go on. Now I'm preparing my canvas a little bit of ultramarine and cadmium orange and some white gives me a good gray so I can tint my canvas. So gray from cadmium orange and ultramarine spread out and rubbed in with a rag and then a slightly darker gray will be used to sketch out the outlines of my subject. It's worth tinting a canvas like this especially if you're if you're new to working with color, because painting on the gray surface will make it much easier to see 
the colours that you apply, and to see the way in which these colours affect each other. Sketching out with the slightly darker fluid grey then gives me a guide as to where I'm going to block in the colour. And then out of this same mixture of cadmium orange and ultramarine, with the addition of just a little bit of yellow and white, I have made a suitable colour for the background cardboard. And I'll then block in what is the negative shape around these objects. This gives me a chance to refine the drawing a bit and also to make them stand out. And I've purposely placed my orange, my um, objects on a piece of card uh, next to the window. So I've got a nice pattern of light and shadow. And as I block in the background colours, I also block in the shadow shapes. And that means I can get a kind of consistency in my painting uh, between the way the light falls on these objects and the way it falls on the background. So once that's all blocked in, I've now got a, a clearer path to seeing the colour which is in um, my three still life objects. So I block in the lemon first and I'm going for the main colourful area of the lemon. And then I apply some of the shadow areas. And at this stage it's almost quite a flat, abstracted set of shapes. But I can mix the edges of those shapes and soften them just using a wiped brush. And that helps model those areas into something more three-dimensional. And I've now mixed a sort of warm white, so some of the cadmium yellow with some white and a little bit more orange. And that's going to allow me to paint some highlight on parts of the lemon. And I make a small adjustment to the shadow colour. That's adding some purple and a little bit more orange. So that there's some variety in those shadows. Probably really between slightly cooler shadows and slightly warmer ones. Then I'm blocking in the pepper. Using the same approach. First the main colourful light area, not the highlight but the light area, and then the pattern of shadow. I look with my eyes half closed and that helps me see where the main light and dark areas are. And as I did with the lemon, I then mix up something for the shiny highlight. It's a warm white again. It's my main yellow orange with the addition of white and even more orange. And I put on the pattern of light on the top of the fruit. Then I've made a mixture using the ultramarine and the cadmium yellow. A mixture for the stem of the pepper. And when I compare that with the stem, it's a little bit too green. So how do we neutralise something that is too green? We add a touch of its opposite red. So just as we did with previous subjects, uh, using complementary colours to neutralise. And I've ended up making three tones for the stem a dark, a middle, and a light. And you see, as gradually more and more of the painting is blocked in, it's easier to see how those colours work together. And this has led me to think that I should adjust some of the shadow colours in the pepper as well. I've made a darker shadow colour using more purple, but I'm also adding orange to it, because there's quite a warm almost a bit of a glow to some of those shadows in parts of the pepper. So darker, but also warmed up with a little bit of extra orange. So this is the great way to work with oil paint. The colors are mixed, they're there on the palette and they can gradually be modified. 
as you see how they work together. And having warmed up parts of the shadow of the pepper, I'm also going back and rethinking some of the lighter parts, which could get just even a bit more yellow-orange. And then it's time to work with the red cabbage. And I've mixed my own purple from ultramarine and alizarin crimson. The red cabbage is a slightly more complicated subject. There are dark areas and light areas, but there's also a little bit more of a range of colours, pinks and blues. But I start with eyes half closed and seeing the main light and dark areas. The dark areas were ultramarine and alizarin crimson. The lighter areas are mixtures with increasing amounts of white and yellow to neutralise some of that colour. And then I'm seeing more variety, pinks and blues, but again making them from the sort of stock colour that I began with. Each time I make a new refining colour, I compare it with the subject, but I also compare it with the painting, just to see if it will fit in. And then I've made something for the, the stem of the, the cabbage, the light area at the front, and that's more or less the colours blocked in, and something for some of the shinier parts of the cabbage as well. So everything is blocked in, covered, one or two things still need a little bit of refining, particularly um, in the cabbage. But again, all these refinements relate to the original mixtures. Here, I thought that some of the dark areas of the cabbage actually needed to be a bit darker. And just by making more of the mixture of ultramarine and alizarin crimson, I can cover those areas a little bit more solidly. And then the last refinements, the negative shape, working on some of the edges of these objects. Uh, there are a few gaps to, to fill in, to help them to stand out and, and refine them. There was a niggly bit of the pepper which wasn't quite satisfied with, which I will just quickly adjust. And there we have yellow and purple mixing complementary opposites to make bright colours and neutralised shadow areas. So I hope you'll try this subject and work with these colours yourselves.